Welcome to Relaunch Live Podcast. Relaunch Live Podcast. Talking all things real estate, the strategies that build it, and sharing their own life-changing growth plans. They are two of the most dynamic people in the business with one common goal. To make you rethink, reimagine, and be re-inspired in your life and business. Welcome to the Relaunch Live Podcast with your hosts, Veronica Figueroa and Jeff Lobb. Hey, welcome back to another hey, episode of Relaunch Live. We're back. I know V's here. You got it. I'm excited to be back. <laughs> um, so V, yeah, I'm glad to see you. I'm so glad every time we can get together on this stuff. I know our schedules sometimes mix up, but you are here and live and I'm excited about it. So. Let's get the yeah, show and over. I kind of totally messed up that intro, right? I, I didn't let you have your moment. I was like nervous. I'm like, ah! Well, okay. go ahead. Why are we here? Why are we here, Jeff? Why are we here? It, hey, this is all about our our common theme. Rethink, reimagine, reinspire. Um, we've got amazing people that join us. Um, besides the stuff that you and I do for a living, it's really all about bringing in the talent of the universe, um, really helping everyone kind of get a feel and a vibe for what's happening in the world, what's happening in the market, ways to improve, ways to generate um, their life, you know, re reliving their life. So V, why don't you, uh, I know you've got a special guest today. I'll let you hand off from here. And yeah, it's a little, uh, it's a lot of fun to see the talent that's coming on to relaunch. And as this, you know, podcast, I think we're on episode number 13 now. 13. Um, and yeah, and the talent just continues to come in the diversity uh, of talent. That's really I would say inspiring the way we think about real estate. And this is, you know, this guest is E equally as special, as talented as all the other guests that we've had and will continue to have. Um, someone that I've had the opportunity of, of getting to know, of uh, partnering with, you know, in some ventures, and hopefully we can get, you know, spread his mission uh, as to what he's looking to do in the real estate space. Dwell Melvin Jones, someone that, you know, has, I would say, taken the real estate industry by storm, by by the choices that he's made. And, you know, we're going to switch it up today. We're not just going to talk about residential real estate. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. other opportunities that you have in this space that so many people are afraid to learn about because of lack of maybe knowledge and uh, mentorship and awareness. So, Duamel, I'm not going to take away too much of your time to shine. I want people to hear from you organically what your mission is, what your story, former executive for, for Disney, you know, and then you, you know, up and quit your full time career job to pursue real estate. And I think your story is super inspiring. So, I'm excited for the world of Relaunch Live and the people who tune in to hear from you. So, man, welcome. Thanks so much. I know Thank you're going to you. bring value. And, um, you know, you, we, let's start off with this. Who are you? And tell us a little bit about why you decided to get into real estate. And then let's dive deep into that mission that you have to see if we can help you accomplish that. Let's do it. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, as you guys were going into the intro, like I was fighting there to jump in too. I was like, yeah, let's, let's, just, <laughs> let's just chop <laughs> it up, man. Yeah. Um, I really love that intro. That was a really dope ass intro. So, uh, props Aww, whoever, whoever did that, that was pretty dope. Uh, yeah. I love to rethink, reimagine, be re-inspired. Uh, I, I feel like that's the mission I'm on as well. And, um, and Vero, I don't do anything equally. So I'm going to, I'm going to mm. take it up, up a notch and a few notches. Yes. Do it. Let, let's do it. Do let's it. do it. Um, so I, I've had, tell us I've a had, little bit about this. Yeah, my, my life, I believe, has been a series of just crazy coincidences. Hmm. You know, e hmm. even the downs, you know, uh, you know, sometimes we have to hit rock bottom. I don't wish rock bottom on anybody, but sometimes you hit that rock bottom and then it, it takes that to, to wake up. I ha I've had to, so many angels in my life to give me guidance, to uh, give me illumination, you know, to, to basically get me back on track. And um, it, it's it. it Life has been a wonderful, wonderful journey for me. I'm loving it. Um, I'm, I'm just a regular guy from uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. You know, Puerto Rico in la casa. Yeah. And <laughs> What's up? That's it. That's it. Uh, electrical engineering background. That's what I did. Uh, that was my career. I'm a professional engineer by trade. And mm. like Vero said, I was, um, I was in the theme park developments for 18 years. So for 18 years, I was... But I was building all these awesome attractions that uh, that you all enjoy. In the last 18 years, if you've been to one of these theme parks, uh, 
chances are you've written something that I was a part of, which was, which is an awesome legacy. Um, are we talking like the Disney parks? We're talking like the Florida parks. Oh, man. Right? You, you, you weren't supposed to drop names, bro. That's all right. <laughs> they're, not sponsoring. They're, not, they're, they're not sponsoring yet. That's all right. Okay. right. Hey, it's, yeah, it's not yeah, a right. secret. Yeah. yeah, that's all right, though. I, I knew you were holding back on that, but I just want to make sure, like, yeah. from some perspective, this isn't like your little, you know, side community park. You're building some big stuff. No, that's, that's funny you say that. But yeah, that's exactly it, man. Uh, yeah, Disney attractions, whole uh, rides, lands. Uh, yeah, it was a, a big part in a lot of that. It was a fun journey. Yeah. Uh, but uh, for me, I, I've always had an itch, a real estate itch. My grandparents had properties growing up in Puerto Rico. And so for me, it, it was kind of natural, you know, seeing it around around the family. And I always thought, man, abuela and abuelo have have money. They're rich. You know, they're 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 wealthy, you know, um, you know, as, as a kid, you just, you just think the parents, the grandparents, you know, seeing them, uh, being able to, to spurge on you is, is really cool. And then the seed was planted is that they were doing this through real estate. Hmm. Fast forward some, some years go I go into college, uh, in college, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to crack the real estate game. So then, uh, after college, I, I start saving a little bit of, of cash and start getting into the flips. Uh, so we started flipping homes. Uh, my wife, Lupita, uh, she and I started flipping homes, started wholesaling. We started doing that whole hustle. Yeah. We mm. did short sales, loss mitigation. So we're uh, not going to say we. She was on the phones with the banks negotiating the deals. And then that, that's how we, we would get our own deals. And, you know, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing that we have always done things unconventional. So we couldn't figure out exactly how to crack how to do flips. So we started creating them by doing the short sales to ourselves. And then, mm. and then, and then we would do the renovations and flip it out. And so that's how we got started with the flips. Mm. Uh, so, but now you had, did you have any mentorship coming up in that? Or is that what you just self learned Did you just get trial by fire? Like, self learn man. And this is where I want everyone here to rethink and reimagine because here we uh, go. Yeah, well, for me, my perspective, okay, guys, you know, full disclosure, my perspective, but I feel like, uh, at least for me, right, the the residential real estate space was hyper competitive, where it was dog eat dog, and, and it wasn't really collaborative. And um, whenever you, you found a mentor or, or somebody that might want to take you along his wings, they, they, they weren't going to give you the, all the secret sauce, because yeah. uh, they wanted they wanted those deals, you know, and so right. um so I, I struggled with that mentality. So then it's like, well, screw it. You know, if, if everybody's for themselves, then I'm going to be all about me. And, and, and it's for me and my family, right? And my team. And, uh, and so I, I think I don't want to go into the next thing, but I, uh, when I found commercial real estate, yeah. I realized it's a whole different, whole different atmosphere. In, the, in this investment space. And uh, I, I don't want to segue too hard into that because I think there's a couple of uh, very important aha moments that have to do with mindset of, of how we shift from one, how we rethink and reimagine. Yeah. You have to be willing to shift your mindset. I love it. Take us there. You know, what was that? So you did experience the whole flipping game. I guess what, what everybody sees, what's the HGTV, the easy button yeah. or easier to follow, which is the trends, right. Of what other people are doing. And it's the, you know, one deal at a time, right. It's like the grind and the hustle and the energy that goes into that, you know, it, it's, it's hard. It's everybody's chasing the same, I would say target. And then while everyone else is zigging, you decided to zag. you were like, wait, 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 let me check it out over here. Right. And you even said it's less emotional, man. It's less emotional. It just, yeah. it's numbers. And with you having an engineer background, I'm assuming, you know, like it, it, if it makes sense, if it makes dollars, then we're, then we're willing to look at it. Right. But there was a exactly. lot of emotion in, in, in the real estate side and most real estate agents, they're trying to sell a house to a client and then they're trying to scoop up a flip here and there. And they're trying to like chase the dollar. And you said, wait, there's a business over here, a predictable business that can be built. There's less emotion. There's, uh, uh, there are resources and there's this ability to work together to build wealth. 
And, you know, you had that moment that was presented to you. And that is that where the aha moment came where you're like, wait, there's got to be a better way. Uh, yeah. Um, but it, it took a little journey to get there uh, on, on our very last flip that we were doing. Uh, our theme park that will soon sponsor this space. Uh, was, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> It was building a massive, uh, uh, a massive expansion um, at, at one of their parks, and I was a, a, a an important piece of that. So I was flying to California a lot, for a lot of front end meetings, all the design, budgeting, in the middle of our biggest flip. So mm. as I was spending two or three weeks at a time in California, I was calling the the contractors, you know, at, during my breaks or whatnot, and they weren't at the property. Uh, because we were like halfway through, if, if you guys know flips, uh, everybody's all happy and gung-ho in the front end. And then towards yeah. the middle, the contractors start getting bored and looking for the next project. Job. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So imagine yeah. having that exact moment while you're away. Right. And, uh, and for me, it was, uh, I, I was hitting the epitome of every stress point, every stress point. I was, uh, uh every, every moment I was not at, at my W2. I was spending at the house. I was meeting the contractors at six because I needed to be at my office at seven 30. So I was like, man, you guys got to be here. So if you force a contractor to get there at six, that dude's leaving at noon. Yeah. So mm. it, yeah, it was, uh, it was painful, but dude, I quit real estate that day. And when we sold, we sold for a fat check because they're fat checks. But I, I'm like, I don't want another W2. I quit real estate. And I'm, I said, I'm going all in on engineering and construction. And I did that for about two years. That's when I got my PE license uh, and, and I went all in, but it, it, it wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't scratching that real estate itch. Like I just had that bug. I had that real estate bug. And that's when. All uh, right. So that was the it. moment that you're like, this is the last check. Like what, what next? Two years of just now doing what was not fulfilling but it wasn't as draining and how did you how did you come across this opportunity to to learn about the uh i would say multifamily space uh um, yeah. opportunity i know that bigger pockets played a big role in this for you and a couple other mentors that came along but take us there because the people who are listening and and you know they want to know what 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 that journey was for you to then start now you own over 147 uh doors or probably more now yeah, right you've got yeah, we're, we're over 200 uh, just closed this morning on 56 units in georgia uh and we have love it uh, love very, it very lucky we have five deals right now on the contract and several more in the pipeline uh yeah we're we're doing really good we're hitting on all cylinders right now all off market and, and what will all those market Wow. Off All off market yeah. property. So for any of you guys who were kind of like on the edge of your seat, waiting to see where's this going, like mm. what is, you know, what is his secret superpower here? You're hearing it. You're now Ooh. getting a sneak peek of it. You know, you got yeah. five on the contract. How many properties, how many doors will that equal? when let's say all five of those properties that are pending together with your current portfolio, will that end up being? Uh, we'll be close to 500, 500, 600 mm. doors. But it's you make, thank you, thank you. You mentioned this uh, word that I think is really, really important. And uh, a friend of mine, Jose Luis, wrote a book, and and he talks about uh, uh, the the twelve laws, uh, or the, yeah, the twelve laws that helped him become successful. And one of them was, "What is your superpower?" You mentioned the word superpower. Uh, it's funny because I was thinking about that book today. It, see, see what I'm talking about, Jeff? Like for me, I feel like. There's coincidence after coincidence after coincidence. Right. It's not mad. I just, yeah, I randomly was thinking about that book this morning. I'm looking for it, but I'll pull it up later. I, I literally was thinking about that book this morning. I'm like, oh, I want to go back to that exact chapter. And you mentioned yeah. that word. Yep. Uh, for, for me specifically, it's taking massive action. And uh, I'm, 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 you know, in Puerto Rico, decimo, decimo I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not normal. Like, uh, you tell me to go, I'm going. If, there, if, I, if I have an idea, I'm, I'm going after that idea, that dream, and, uh, and 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 that's that's I think is my superpower and what's been helping me uh, so far. So what's the what's that, that first property when you got back in? What was that first different type of property you got? Yeah, so uh, multifamily, inmuebles multifamiliares, commercial multifamily. 
But I'm thinking it's duplexes, triplexes, and quads because yeah. when you look around, you're thinking there's no way I can buy one of these big ass buildings, right? These big apartment complexes. Right. There's no way I can do that. So I, I said I'm just gonna I'm gonna focus on what I thought was multifamily. I picked up a book. You know, uh, they say the biggest secrets are hidden inside books. Mm-hmm. And I, I just which book? Pick, it's Multifamily Millions by David Lindahl. All and right. It, yeah, There's the nugget and, there, guys. The, yeah, we'll get, it, that, it, we'll get that book in the, written in the comments. Yeah. Multifamily Millions by Life David Changer. who? Lindahl. L i n d a h l. Yep. Okay. So that yeah, book, you got it, and that because you were thinking, okay, duplexes, quads, you know, uh, that's that's your next phase, babe. We cracked the code. Yeah. We're gonna buy that's duplexes it. and multifamily, <laughs> right? And never did you imagine that the big apartment complexes that you're driving by that have 20, 40, 50, 100, 200 apartments was really going to be your next big, your next big chapter of, of what your business would look like. Exactly. Um, yeah, never in a million and, years. Yeah, so never what, in a million what, years. what, what you read the book. You, then what did you realize? Like, I, I need to figure this out. Like, and yes. did you call? Oh, yeah. what did you do? Like, where did you go? What was next? So that book, uh, that book taught me that anybody can buy apartment complexes. Uh, Cause he, he goes through stories of how he put deals together. And then he explains who sellers are, owners are people just like me and you. And so, uh, but he also explains that it's a different ball game. It's not the residential real estate as we think of it. Rethink, reimagine, right? And so it's it's not buying a house and then putting a renter in the house. It's it's buying a business. Mm-hmm. So you buy a business, you improve that business, you you increase the value of that business. Then you could refi out of that business, or you could just cash out and sell. And for me, like those little ahas, little little like. Tony Robbins would say mini breakthroughs yep. and like, Ooh, Oh, okay. Wait a minute. So this is not real estate per se. So is this, is this in the, you know, the, the biggest intimidation people have when, and probably you had when you see these big complexes, I know I had it, I sold commercial for probably eight to 10 years and I focused on um, more of the resident, um, more of the uh, retail commercial, like your blockbuster video stores back in the day, the, the block buildings. Um, and you know, it's coincidental every little small strip center that I came across in New Jersey, by the way, with some owner sitting in Florida on his boat. Um, <laughs> everyone everyone owned it and they were in Florida. So yeah. it was a message yeah. to me like, hey, we are owning these things because they're sitting on their boat while these things are operating, right? But did did financing and how do you buy this? How do you how do you get the financing to buy this? Was that the intimidation or how do people get past that intimidation of, I can't possibly afford something like that? Yeah, uh, well, keep learning, keep learning. So you start peeling the layers of the onion and keep keep reading finding more books, finding uh, communities. I went to a conference that, um, that I mean, again, series of coincidences. This was late 2018 or so. And, um, and I told Lupita, this is it. We're going all in on, on apartments. Yep. It's December. So I'm like, oh, it's December. Now I need to find a conference. I'm like, I need, I, I'll, fly in, I'll fly to Alaska. I just need to be around like-minded. In, like, I don't know anybody. I don't even know where to find. I don't know anybody in my atmosphere that knows anything about this world, but they exist somewhere. So then uh, I found a conference that was two hours away in Tampa, two weeks later. So it, it was amazing. And at that conference, believe it or not, I was introduced to Tony Robbins and his, uh, his, his models. And I promised Lupita right there. I'm like, uh, we're going to date with destiny. Yeah. Uh, mm. and that, that date with destiny for me, uh, completely rewired me, rewired uh, everything about me. Yep. And, and it, I didn't, I couldn't have found that without commercial real estate, without yeah. learning how to invest. It's like all these series of coincidences. Yep. Let me, let me, let me take people there a little bit, how exciting and sexy this is. You spent um, about four hours with me a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. And I'll be the first one, guys. I, I know real estate. I know residential real estate. I'll run circles around people in residential real estate. But this is a space I, too, um, shied away from. 
you know, I didn't know enough. I wasn't knowledgeable, you know, bank owned properties, asset management. You give me that. I'll, I'm Gucci. I'm good. But when it came to this foreign space, I used to think, oh, no, you know, that's for maybe an older experienced mm -hmm. person, you know, the that's been in the, the game elites. for a long time. Yeah. Wealthy elite. And um, I had to get over that mindset. And I've been spending a lot of time with people in this space. I had the opportunity to spend time with Ben Kinney um, two weeks ago with Brian Gubernick. And, you know, I have to agree with you, Duhamel. You were saying things are not, it's not coincidental, right? It's meant to happen. I feel like I'm prepared in this space. We just launched Grid Orlando, which is an investment network. You were one of our first speakers. We also, and, and this is a basically a network of, 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 of deal making opportunities, right? Outside of the traditional real estate space. And I had to say, I'm gonna be committed to learning this, right? So I go, I meet with you. You're talking to me about cost segregation. You're talking to me about single member LLCs. We're talking about, you know, I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, people who are in a completely different wealth bracket. And what I find is they don't have a, 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 a I need to make money issue. They need to, they have a, I need to place my money issue. Where do I place my money issue is where this is so sexy because it's like, hey, where do I make my investments so then I can get additional, let's say, and I'm going to talk things that some people may not like, tax savings, tax, you know, yeah. shielding. Yeah. And, and then it's not about, hey, I need to make more money. It's the depreciation, the accelerated depreciation. It's, you know. Um, being able to have an asset that's performing for you that you can take as many deductions as possible. Well, you know, I'll be honest, it's, I'm, I'm entering that space in my life. And I am this kid in a candy store giddy when I hear the books that we should be reading, the, 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 the you know, like even things from Augusta rule, like, you know, are you maximizing your, your, your tax savings with your primary residence? If you're hosting events, running it back to your space, like all these conversations, the conversations are different. But you Absolutely. cannot have these conversations if you do not enter the room. So for me, what I thought was really cool is like when you and I were talking and you're, you know, going everything like, B, what are you doing to like, you know, maximize your tax savings and this and that? I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm living half the time in Puerto Rico, you know, like, yep. but there are alternative ways. Right. And it's like, oh, you're not maximizing your opportunities here. Let's talk about buying buildings. Let's talk about buying, you know, multifamily. Let's talk about the tax benefits and you know there's so it's so much deeper that people just think oh i want to buy an apartment complex it, yeah. it's a different conversation and i want to take us there because i'm over here like i have pictures of, of what you did on the dry race board and i'm like okay like what books am i reading now but then i i met with you then i go spend time with ben and then i spend time with brian and we're talking about like come to our mastermind where we're talking nothing about these strat we're talking about every you know like all things strategies on how to make your money work for you and you said something to me it was like the like the brick and mortar of real estate is not what is so sexy it's the depreciation and it's the business of you know being able to and, and and of course, we're talking about in other conversations, you know, affordable housing and all that. But like improvements that can justify a higher increased rate. I mean, rental, you know, that's a business, you know, and, and all yeah. these things that a lot of times we're so busy in the grind. We don't take time to learn how our money can work for us. And this is the part that I'll be the first one, especially for anyone who's listening, like, it's our relationship with wealth. It's our relationship with money that keeps us from growing because we just don't have a relationship with it. So if you can actually hang around people, like I'm super blessed to hang around with friends like you that like give me those aha moments. Like you said, Tony Robbins breakthroughs where I'm like, oh my, I might not have to work as hard. <laughs> you know, like my money can work a little harder for me, you know? And it's, it's exciting to know that this is more than just buying a building. This is about strategies that can help build generational wealth for your grandchildren that do not exist today. And 100%. I tell people, ladies, and listen, I like good shoes. I said this at my event the other day. I like good bags, but we got to stop buying bags and shoes and start buying buildings because we're going to own That's the right. block. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Start so playing Monopoly in real life, just, baby. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm okay with Baltic Avenue. I'm okay with, you know, all those, you know, Oriental Avenue. Um, I used to play Monopoly. I'm like, I'll take that block right there. You got to land on there every time you pass, go. 
That's right. You know, so what are the yeah. odds? But here's the thing, guys. We've got to stop being so emotional with these decisions and start being more strategic in business and, and forget about the HGTV. I want to be with the guys, like he, like Jeff said, that while he was selling commercial, the owners were all on your yacht in Florida. Yep. yep. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, you just got to start having that mindset sh mindset shift, right, that you just mentioned and start learning so that you could be the person who also is able to introduce the opportunity. So, Duhamel, you you learned it. Give us some some podcasts people should be listening oh, to. What are some I, of the first steps? And then, yeah. I want to okay. pick it back on something that you said, because um, uh, all of the secrets that are contained inside of these beautiful buildings, it's. Uh, we have short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains. And guys, I am not a tax advisor, I'm not a CPA, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a retired engineer. I'm a full-time real estate investor, but short-term capital gain, gains, the fix and flips, that gets taxed at a much, much higher tax bracket yeah. than all the money that I'm getting from all my rents and all my investors are getting from all our rents. And that we're now taking that spendable cash and it's tax deferred. So all the cash flow that our investors are getting monthly, it's tax deferred. So now you can buy your shoes with this passive income. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard a lot of flippers talk about, you know, they, they're buying their toys or, or, you know, living their lifestyle off of flips, but dude, that money, you're paying double the tax bracket that I am for the same money. Yep. And uh, yeah. yeah, are these, are these, um, are these purchases, um, a lot of people may not know the term in residential, but are these, are these through syndications, these these purchases, or are they just coming through just groups of investors together? Like, what's the process of this? Yeah, 100 percent syndication. The beauty of syndication and uh, I implore all our, all our real estate professionals to look into this. Yeah. But, you know, you're 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 making bank selling houses that money all that profit that you're getting, you should be putting it into these buildings. Why? Because it, it'll pay you back 15 to 20% annually on average. Mm -hmm. And it, it'll be paying, it'll, it could pay your lifestyle or you can just grow that nest egg. And the beauty, the beautiful thing is that with a syndication, we create an entity structure that the investors are, are part of. And they all together through with 20, 30, 40 investors, we pull this, this capital together and buy this building. So now all, all of these investors are all owners. The beauty of that syndication model is that the investors are owners. Yep. They truly are owners. You own this, this piece of real estate. It's yours. Yep. You know, a small percentage, of course, but you are a true owner. That means you get the benefits. That means you do get these long-term capital gains when we sell in three to five years. And you would have been getting all this cash flow year over year over year over year, uh, direct deposited, you know, uh, just dripped right into your, your bank account every yeah. month. And the other beautiful part of, of this is that you, that investment is safe. It's, 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 it's boring, right? It's not as sexy as like a Bitcoin, but it's also not as volatile. Bitcoin is, you know, dipping a little bit right now, but and not disparaging Bitcoin. Just this isn't volatile. This is just, this is a simple you know, simple graphical, uh, uh, you know, formula and it's just so, steady growing, just steady growing. So let's answer a couple quick questions. Cause I know time's going to tick by. And I, I think our audience would want to hear a couple of these, like, you know, the fears of getting involved in this. So we do a syndication, there's 20 investors, my first fear. And, and I've been part of these, but I'm playing. If I was a, a person who's never gotten into this is, well, there's 20 people who's in charge. How do I know who's in charge of my money? Are they all going to be decision makers? Like, right. So, yeah, they all are. All, all, all 20 people are decision makers. Yeah. Um, just, so just teasing, 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 yeah, teasing. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, in, in, the, in the syndication, the structure of a syndication is limited partners, which is the passive investors yeah. uh, don't have a vote. They invest their capital so that the general partners, which is the operating managers, right. do the work. And uh, that, that's that's what we specialize in. We specialize in. Uh, identifying undervalued properties, undervalued markets, grabbing these properties, acquiring them, improving them, and returning capital to our investors. Yep. So yeah, the, inv the, the investors don't do any work, man. And that's the beauty is, is go sell houses. You know, a real, a realtors that are watching, go sell houses. You know, I have uh, um, some athletes, you know, like, like go get that next contract, go score those touchdowns, break that track and field record, 
you know, artists, go, go make that, that hit record, you know, let, let the capital grow over here in this building safe, not in the bank where the bank's doing fractured, uh, you know, fractional uh, lending and giving you nothing for that. And it's being eaten away by inflation. Yeah. I mean, so I don't have to get that. Mm. I have a clogged toilet in the middle of the night call. Like, I'm, that's not what I'm doing with the, with the multifamily. I don't you know, want it. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't even get that call. I don't even get that call. I know. It's a great, we, got, we, 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 got, we got people in place. Yep. Yeah. And I think that that's where there has to be another mindset shift, the control of, you know, the Ooh, limited man. mindset and believe like, oh, I need to be in control of everything. Like me, I'm at a point in my life, my time is my freedom. If I can have my money working for me and I get more time to do the things that I absolutely love, yeah, I'm I'm all for it. And I also am a believer in passive income. And I'm also a believer is I rather own 5% of a lot of things than 100% of one thing. You know, so when you can realize that, look, if you're out there, you're making two to three hundred thousand dollars a year in real estate, four hundred. Some of you guys are making seven figures. You know, some of you guys are making six figures in the mid, you know, like what are you really doing to set yourself up for success rather than just buying one property at a time? Think about, you know, maybe diversifying yourself and saying, look, I got about 50 to 100 to, you know, $150,000. I want to I want to own the building too. I want to own that 200 unit building or that 30, I mean, that 50 unit building with other like-minded people who also, you know, are similar. And then we're bringing more opportunities together because now we're cash flowing, right? Now we're cash flowing and the business is working for us. Um, and, you know, I know some of y'all try to avoid taxes or maybe don't even file. Like there's a way that you could actually lower your tax bracket by doing, you know, making these types of investments. And it's by having these type of conversations. Um, Cause I know some of y'all be scrambling. Some of, me too. I used to be that until I got into the right rooms with great coaches and great mentors. Um, and, and it, it does the, writing that check to where it's to be, uh, to be an owner in a building versus, you know, that tax liability, which we still all have tax liabilities, but if you could reduce it, you know, and, and you could build wealth, that's pretty awesome. And I just invite more people to think like that, hopefully, yeah. you know, so that's the first step for a lot of people. I love yeah. the fact that it's, you know, we're not doing the typical landlord work that so many people yes, are getting. Yes, exactly. I, I'm still living that world a little bit too, is you don't want to deal with that fixing stuff or the, the roof needs repaired or you're getting those phone calls from, you know, a tenant that's got an issue. Not that we can't always avoid that, but in the in this type of platform, it's so different. There's people that do it for you. Like, I'm just worried about the investment. And I go back to doing, making more money. Like, I go make more money. So, yeah, I get it. it and Jeff, uh, like Veronica mentioned the word wealth and wealthy, wealthy people. This is what the wealthy have been doing for centuries, for centuries. It's been reserved for the privileged, but now we know the secret. Yep. And like change the way you think, like think about it. This is how they invest in real estate. They are investing in real yep. estate. So we, we must do the same thing so we can participate in this America, in America's wealth game, do the same thing, gotcha. you know? And, yep. and that's what I'm inviting. I'm inviting everybody listening, everybody watching to, learn more, you know, uh, obviously we'd love for you to invest with us, but you know, definitely learn more. And um, just tell us who us is. Let's give me the formal name. Let's, let's just talk who's, what's your company. Just what's your official name? 1015 capital. That's who we are. Uh, yeah. we're a really cool group of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We like to have fun. We like to play hard, but, uh, uh we understand we're, we're really smart individuals. Almost everyone on our team is an engineer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We have a lot of finance people as well, but um, uh, for the most part, you know, we, we this is what we do full time. Uh, we we are inviting people like yourselves, you know, to rethink and reimagine how to invest. What are real estate investments, you know, and then to to like Veronica said about the control. Yeah. And, and real quick, so because we uh, we try to keep to the integrity of the show and keep the show to about 30, 35 minutes so before we wrap up is what projects and opportunities do you have right now on, you know, like, would you say like, hey, listen, you're looking to move your money. You're looking to be involved in this. We have X amount of projects that are available, you know, anywhere from 50,000 to 250,000. What do you got? What do you got for us? For anybody who's listening and say, yeah. look, I want to explore this. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, we have, like I said, we have deal flow. We have deals on the contract. We have deals coming uh, all off market. Like I mentioned early on, uh, we, we pride ourselves in being able to get these hidden gems. You know, uh, um, a lot of the big guys look at the, because we love secondary tertiary markets. And a lot of the big guys, the the, the big power players, they're, they're, they're looking for these certain big check marks. And these secondary tertiary markets don't, they don't have those check marks. So we're, we're finding these awesome undervalued properties yeah. and, uh, and, and our typical investment opportunity starts at 50 K uh, anywhere from 50 K to a million dollars. Uh, it's typically the typical investments depend on the deal, the bigger the deal. Sometimes it's a little bit higher uh, barrier of entry, maybe a hundred K, but uh, that that's about uh, uh, the entry for one of our deals. But yeah, we have, we have deals coming up. So, Hit us up, get to know us. And then you so send us a, you. a profile of the property and the, the returns. And you, so if I had interest, I got 50 executive grand. summaries, everything. Summary, send me exactly. the whole package. We make decisions, we get on the phone. Um, yeah, we, we, we even do webinars for every property that we do. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll put a webinar together so everybody can meet the team and investors can ask real life questions in front of other investors. Yeah. Uh, those, cool. are, those are really good platforms. Awesome. Love well, that. I think I there's, love that. there's a whole new world well, out there. So yeah, absolutely. yeah. And we're going to make sure that we put Dwemel's contact information in the comments and, you know, they have everything from executive summaries as to the projects that they have available. You can learn a little bit more about them. Uh, Dwemel, give us a little bit, one last nugget. What podcast should people be listening to? And is there any other book that you would recommend? Sure. And so um, we are freely promoting other podcasts. <laughs> yes. I have to ask. I have to ask. Yeah. Not, 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 not yeah. ask. I mean, just saying, we <laughs> don't care. Listen, we're yeah. so abundant. We're so abundant love it. here. Yeah. We don't care. Yeah. We don't care. Yeah. I, I, I'm exactly the same. The, the pie is, is literally infinite. I, I was asked, uh, uh, we're, we're bringing in new team members and, uh, and, and I had a question because I, I, just like you, Vera, I'm always looking and, and I know you do too, Jeff. I was looking for the best of the best. So I'm out there talking to, people that I know are executives or directors at companies and, and bringing them on to 1015 capital. And one of them asked me the other day is, is, but you're slicing off a piece of the pie. I'm like, no, dude, like that's, that's, that's not it. That's not it at all. Like yeah. if the pie, if, if you truly believe that the pie is infinite, then there are no slices. It's just, it's like Bob mm. Marley talked about, Bob, Bar Bob Marley talked about wealth being like water in the ocean, go get buck buckets full. You get your buckets full. The ocean didn't all of a sudden shrink, right? Right. And and mm. so yeah, that that's the you know the mindset that that we have around that. Uh, so abundance. Uh, the um, a fun a friend of mine, his name is Whitney Sewell. He has a podcast called the Lifetime. I think it's called the Lifetime Cash Flow or something like that. Lifetime, but it's Whitney Sewell. He has a daily podcast. Okay. That thing is I think is awesome. He he is a Phenomenal guy as well. He, uh, he has an awesome cause, uh, but that's an awesome, awesome uh, podcast. Another one is Michael Michael Blanc, B A B L A N K. Uh, it's blank, but it's pronounced Blanc. Uh, he's got he's got an awesome podcast as well. As far as books, uh, uh, the the book that I just finished, it's somewhere on here. The book I just I just finished. That, uh, really, really it's okay. It. No, it's this guy right here. Oh, there it is. Big Money Energy yeah. by Ryan Serhan. Okay. Oh, Where he's pretty popular. That guy does a few things. I have yeah. one last thing as we wrap up because I know where we're past time is I did not give you an opportunity to share your mission. And in less than two minutes, yeah. I need you to share why you're so passionate and because your mission is very important. To short to bridge the gap to shorten the gap of something that's that you notice in this space and I'm very passionate about go. Yeah, so Forbes had, had, uh, they did a a study in 20, 2017 and it showed that by 2050, Black and Latino households are going to have negative net worth. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we struggle with in our communities is uh, is having self confidence, having self awareness, having uh, having just knowledge in general about around wealth. So 
I believe that that trend is happening because we are in our communities. We're afraid to talk about uh, exactly what we just talked about here in the show. And so it's, it's my mission to disturb that trend. And why is that? Why is that powerful to me? Because 2050 is my lifetime is our lifetime. It's my kids. I've got two kids. I've got nieces and nephews. You know, I don't want them to be a statistic. And then I have neighbors and then you start branching out and you realize, man, we need to wake some of these people up and open up these investment opportunities and bring them to the doorstep. Say, look, this is what the wealthy are doing. Let's not fall behind. Let's join. Let's, 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 let's disrupt the game. Because when you look around, a lot of people do not look like us, but we can change that. And let's just disrupt the game mm. together. Let's jump in and make that impact. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I can get behind that. I can get behind that. Let's disrupt the game. Let's change that statistic that Forbes said that black and brown will have negative net worth. Instead of that, let's make sure that we're able to increase our net worth and talk more about wealth and have more diversity in ownership of commercial wealth buildings, you name it. So I love this. Thank you so much for being a part of today's show. Relaunch Live is all about bringing inspiring leaders who help you reimagine, rethink, and be re-inspired. All things real estate, no matter what. So Jeff, what do you think? We got this one, right? You see, you wrapped it up perfectly. I, I'm excited about diving into more stuff. I appreciate you being here, Jamel. And, Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and uh, until the next show, we'll see you guys. Uh, if you want to follow us, you know, hit us up on Apple, Spotify, Google Play. We are all over the place, especially streaming on YouTube Live now, too. And uh, please uh, invite some of your guests and friends to uh, join us next time. Thank you, guys. Love it. If you love Thank this you. episode, share it. We'll see you on the next one. You've been listening to the Relaunch Live podcast, helping you rethink, reimagine, and be re-inspired in your life and business. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. Find the show on Apple, Google Play, Spotify, and YouTube. See you next time.